Well, welcome to Night Vale. It is time for the Children's Fun Fact Science Corner. Yay! <laughs> so, this has been a announcement as of Thursday the 10th. I'm recording it on the 11th, but I probably won't upload it today because I've already uploaded one video with my 9-11 reflection. So we're not going to do that. So, there has been a discovery of a new human ancestor in South Africa. I'm probably going to butcher the name. Uh, Homo Naledi? Naledi? I don't, I don't actually know. Let's, let's go with it. It is, like I said, a new human ancestor. It looks much like one of our more primitive ancestors with some surprisingly human-like features. The hands and feet especially are really similar to modern humans. Um, it also has, this article says, a ritualized behavior period to thought limited to humans in that it, we believe, they believe, that it intentionally deposited it, it's dead, in a remote cave chamber. Um, this article is from my university, which I'll get to in a minute. They believe that Hamon Naledi is about 5 feet tall and weighed approximately 100 pounds. And it had a relatively small brain size, despite its relatively large body size. Um, the si size of the brain was about the size of an orange. So, I'm going off, going off the subject that you know what an orange is, because they're a pretty common fruit in the U.S. Um, it, that's pretty small, especially for someone about the same size as me. Um, this quote from, um, one of the researchers, once again, which I will get to in a moment, it says, we used to think that body size and brain size increased together, but this proves that it's not necessarily true. Body and brain size must be under different selective force, selection forces. Small brain size is also surprising given the features of the hand, which suggests possible tool making as well as the possibility that this species was deliberately depositing, depositing their dead in this cave. Ultimately, these findings show that a larger brain is not necessarily a prerequisite to these human-like behaviors, which is really interesting. Because, for one thing, we operate under the assumption that larger brain equals, um, like I said, more human-like capacities, more intelligence, even. But um, there's a decent amount showing with this new discovery that suggests that might not actually be true. They haven't dated the fossils yet, but the article says, also says that if the fossils are older than, 200 mil, than 2 million years old, it will give us important information about the, begin, about the beginnings of the genus Homo, which were part of Homo sapiens. There's a whole line within that particular genus, and this is just one new... However, if they're less than a million years old, it would indicate that there were multiple forms of human ancestors living in South Africa at the same time. And this small-brained species lived alongside larger-brained species, including Homo erectus, which were the first known peoples to leave Africa. All of that is really interesting to me as a forensic anthropology major. What makes it even cooler is that the person who those quotes were from and the person who led the body size team, which found uh, the height and the weight and the brain size and stuff, is a professor at my university. So um, there was a press conference yesterday. Unfortunately, I missed it because I was at lab for my archaeology class. But uh, I heard that was pretty cool. She presented her findings. And there was an international press conference, a lot of us based on South, South Africa, but she focused and did a, apparently, I, like I said, I wasn't there, 
apparently did a presentation in one of the rooms, at the, in um, in one of our halls, and I got an email from the secretary of the applied forensics department saying like, hey, y'all should come out and come to this conference. Of course, it's said a bit more professionally, but you get my point. I'm really upset that I missed it, let's be honest. And even more so than just the discovery, that really helps the merit of my school. We have two board certified forensic anthropologists on, um, as professors, the only two in the state. And now we have an expert of international claim that makes our forensics and forensics program, it says forensics, our forensic program second to none, which is really cool for me as a applied forensic science major with a concentration in forensic anthropology, which is what our experts are in. So that's pretty neat. Um, I'm going to be interested, going back to the discovery, to see what comes out of it, what we figure out, how old the remains are, if this is um, some of the extra stuff of that miss, of the so-called missing link. So it's really cool. If I don't have any pictures, but look it up because it's it's really really interesting. Um. So yeah, this has been the children's fun facts science corner. Yeah. <gasps>